Hey guys, Ifaris here and today I want to do something a little bit different. I think I stumbled upon a little bit of a hidden gem here. So yesterday I was going through GOG and noticed that something called Richter Ran is on the second place of the sellings list. Quick Google search later revealed that Victor Vran is actually a somewhat older title from February this year. Uh, that seems to be a, let's say, lower budget ARPG. But this one has a few twists. I bought it right away, I'm curious, and it got me hooked. I played it for 4 hours straight yesterday, it didn't really let me sleep. That given, I thought, I virus. You need to show this to the world. Make a video. So, what is Rictoran? And what's it doing that you might ask? And what is the game about? Great question, dear viewer. Rictoran is, well, this guy. The player. Yeah. You only have one character. No mages, no warriors. This guy. You are him. I gotta say this beforehand. The story is not the strong suit of the game, but then I've never really cared of stories in ARPG, whether it's killing Diablo for the bazillionth time or smacking the alchemist in Torchlight. ARPGs in general just want to give you an excuse to kill everything and get loot, so why even bother, right? So there's already one big difference in this game, loot. There's not a lot of it. Drops happen once every 30 to 40 mobs, maybe, if even. So, the idea is that you are that demon hunter Victor Vran. Being already awesome as you are, you don't really need much new gear, so you don't get a lot of equipment drops. Equipment in general is not parted in gloves, chest pieces, etc., but rather whole piece gear that fits into each other and has a certain style. And it also changes the way the player gains overdrive. More to that in a minute. What is dropping more often is the weapons. The attacks you can do vary greatly depending on what weapon you have active. And you always get one normal attack and two special attacks with each weapon. It is always possible to quickly switch in new weapons from the inventory, however for really really fun combos you can always wear two weapons at once and switch between them pulling off really brutal combos. Then you also have demon powers. This is where overdrive comes into play. During your fighting, you build up overdrive depending on what you wear. Some gear only gives you overdrive when you crit, some gear periodically over time. Once your overdrive is full, you can unleash one of these demon powers, magic spells so to speak. Which one that is depends on what you have equipped. Demon powers also drop quite regularly and very greatly from boomerang over meteor showers all the way to protective shields. Your passive boni are determined by the destiny cards that you can equip. They can boost your melee damage, your critical damage, even your overdrive gain, so you can specialize the character a little bit more with those destiny cards. They get more powerful over time, like you get more powerful drops, but you always have a certain amount of destiny points, so you can't just take all of the most powerful destiny cards, you have to. You have a certain limit that you need to look out for. So jumping now to the world map of the game, there's something you might notice. Every area here has a certain amount of stars to them. If you click on a map, you will see that each map has a certain amount of secrets to find on the top right corner. Sometimes finding these is also among optional side objectives that you see on the left hand side of the screen. In this case the game would reward me with 2000 experience if I slay 5 wraiths with a hammer, 1000 more for slaying essences of rock with melee attacks and some gold for the secret hunt and treasure chest for the last two objectives. Every single map has these optional objectives and to me they vary up the game quite nicely. 
since it also asks you to do some things that are a little bit different and you also have to use different weapons. You see, um, essences of rock are better fought with ranged weapons, so killing three of them with melee attacks is also a little bit riskier. The fourth objective also shows another nice feature that reminds me a little bit of the torment modes from Diablo 3. Slay monsters with Hex of Tennessee. On the top right corner you see five icons. These are your hexes. You can activate them to make monsters stronger or yourself weaker in exchange for more experience and better item find. In the case of this objective, the game asks me to give every monster 120 armor and regeneration, which will also make the fifth objective, killing 50 monsters within 4 minutes, quite harder. Moving on to the game and the fighting itself, there are several things to note that are new to the average ARPG player. For once, you can choose the way you control Victor. Either you do it Diablo style with mouse movement, so you click on the area where you want him to go, or you can also use WASD while having a mouse free to control and rotate the camera to your liking. This makes the game much better for me, since all that mouse movement stuff never really was my kind of thing. Since WASD works perfectly, the game also offers you to use the controller if you want. Xbox One, PS4, everything works. I haven't tried it yet, but from the way the game works, I would say it should function just as well as keyboard, if not even better. Another thing that you can't do in other games is jumping. You can't jump in this game, you can even wall jump to other platforms. In addition to that, you can also dodge roll, much like the console version of Diablo 3. This is necessary since you don't really find gear to completely overpower you, so dodging the enemy shots is necessary to not get completely roasted in some areas. Due to the fact that you can jump, the levels are a lot more vertical. You jump up places that you usually would consider just the edge of the level. And you especially start to love this feature once you get to a little fence when in other games you would have to go around it and walk for 30 seconds just to get to the other side. In this game, just jump over it. Accompanying you on your travel is a certain voice, whose origin you can't quite place, it's a voice in your head. And it's one sarcastic son of a bitch. This guy makes fun of everything and everyone. He's there to give you useful tips and sometimes to lead you head on into an ambush that almost kills you. And while he's doing that, he's clearly having great fun and laughing at you at every instance he can. This edition is quite welcome for me, ARPGs need more humor, they are not serious games. Look at all those spider eggs, Ooh. I wonder how many there are. Nope. Let's count them. So let's have a look at the weapons. Please bear in mind that I'm far from unlocking every possible weapon type in this game, so I just want to show you my favorites. First up, the rapier. The rapier is a fast melee weapon that focuses on penetrating armor. The left mouse button attack is a quick flurry combo, the Q spell is a dash forward, damaging everything in your way, and the E attack is a strong thrust towards the enemy. 
The fun part with the rapier is that it focuses on getting things for killing people. If you kill someone with a flurry attack, the next attack will deal double damage. Coop the grass on E causes bleeding and if the attack kills the target, it resets the 16 second long cooldown timer on the charge. So basically the tactics for this weapon is to use flurry to do more damage, then use E on weakened enemies to kill them and be able to fly through the screen all the time with a charge attack. The second weapon I want to show you here is the shotgun. The left mouse attack is a normal shot at the enemy that can cause vulnerability, which also results in 100% chance to crit with a follow up attack. Your Q is an aimed shot, an attack dealing triple the amount of damage with a 12 second cooldown that resets every single time you get a kill with a shotgun. So your E attack is an AE salvo with short range also applying knockback and giving yourself a little speed buff. This is perfect to kill lots of weaker enemies in front of you. This weapon is nice to get rid of many enemies quickly from a safe distance. The third weapon I want to show you is another ranged weapon and this one to me seems quite unique, the lightning gun. Your main attack is a shock attack which doesn't do much damage but it electrocutes enemies. So the attack also chains to other electrocuted enemies. The Q is a lightning ball dealing massive damage while bouncing across electrocuted targets. E is a lightning trap that fires a slow ball of lightning that explodes after some time so you can hold down the attack button to let the ball fly faster so that the trap gets shot further. The big gimmick with this weapon is basically to use the main attack to keep every enemy electrocuted and then throw out as many balls of lightning to deal massive damage to your enemies. Last but not least is one of my favorites, the hammer. This thing just feels as meaty as you would want from a big ass hammer. Every single hit shakes the screen and the attacks just scream massive amounts of pain. Your left mouse attack is a normal set of hits with the third hit being more powerful and having a knockback. Your E is a smash that lifts you airborne and you come down smashing your enemies to the ground and dealing massive damage and also giving yourself a nice handy lifesteal buff. The Q attack is a big crushing attack with a hammer applying a cripple condition. That attack can also be charged up to do more damage and at maximum charge it also completely ignores any armor the enemy might have. Since you will probably receive quite some damage while charging your crush attack, I would recommend first doing the jump attack to have your life steal. so when the Q attack finally hits everything on your screen, your life bar will get a big boost. So from what I have seen so far of the map design and monster design, also the way that monsters try to kill you, you seem to have quite a bit of a variety, which is nice. Sometimes I have to admit the art style really reminds me of Torchlight 2, which is also nice. I can't tell you how long the game is since I only play like six hours or so but given the low price point at 16 euros at GOG I think it has already been worth a buy for me. From what you have seen you might be able to see if you like the game or not and maybe this also helps you decide. If you're the kind of person that usually doesn't get into ARPGs but you like the concept of it this game really might be worth looking at for you. But if you expand to find tons of loot and create your own characters just for one specific build and equipment like it's the case in say Path of Exile, this game will probably leave you unsatisfied in your need to loot new stuff. I hope you liked this video and maybe you think this game might be something for you too. If you have any questions to the video or the game, just let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to see me playing stuff on Twitch, I'm streaming almost every evening around 10 p.m. Central European time, so you can find the link in the description. 
Feel free to check it out. I try to always communicate with my viewers and maybe we can start a discussion on some gaming related topics. I would be happy to see you guys there. Thank you guys for watching and I hope I will see you next time.